speak. So, Assembly Member Whittle. has outlined our amendment extremely eloquently, as is his usual way, and it's all there before you in terms of all the, all the figures. I think what I should point out, really, uh, is that this is a truly radical draft amendment, in the sense that we are asking for, or we have budgeted for, two and a half thousand policemen. The Tories are asking for just over a thousand, or that's what they're offering. Um, that's great. There's a lot in their budget that actually we would agree with. But it just simply doesn't go far enough. <clears throat> because the fact is, is that violent crime, whether it's knife crime, whether it's a sense in which policemen are simply not there anymore, which is something which is, I think, uh, common to most people now, a feeling of uncertainty, a feeling of unsafety, and also a complete and utter lack of leadership coming from here. Right? These are the main preoccupations of most people in London now. I'm afraid that much as it's very nice to talk about cycling and cycle lanes and what have you, these are not the main preoccupations of people. Quite rightly, I would say, it is actually their safety. It is the sense in which basically they feel that law and order is being upheld that they are being looked after and that their police force is visible. None of these things apply, unfortunately, in London at the moment. So basically, by putting up the police by two and a half thousand, that is a truly radical act. This is a, a radical budget amendment. And we have not just come out of this with thin air. Uh, we have been through, and I think it's a, a radical uh, amendment, uh, but in basically based on commonsensical solutions. We've just gone through the budget and looked and seen what is not necessary. We do not need any more staff at City Hall. We do not need a mayor who basically spends money on campaigns such as London is open. London has always been open. It, <laughs> London will be open even more open yeah. after Brexit, for goodness sake. We don't need that kind of money being spent in that way. What we do need is a good and healthy police presence. When people look back at this time of our history, they won't, I'm afraid, think that was the time that London started cycling. That was the time that basically London started putting in all these great superhighways. They won't think that. They'll think, actually, that was the time that London started to become much more like New York, actually, in its crime. That's what they will be thinking, and they will be right to think that. Because, frankly, when you're sitting over there on the embankment that David mentioned earlier, and you're sitting there in congestion, which, of course, is polluting the air, and you're sitting right next to a superhighway where there is absolutely nobody to be seen, it's a form of insanity. <laughs> it's a form of insanity that we are laying these things down at the very, very time as we are actually increasing congestion and pollution, you know, by the very same method. So I think that these things are a matter of priority, a matter of choice. We have just simply reformulated and recapitulated the priorities. So I wish you will maybe make a radical gesture, actually, and support this amendment. That would send a real message to the mayor and indeed, it will send a message to Londoners who frankly think that nothing really is being done. Thank you very much. Assembly Member Hall. 